Hello you amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. So if you're one of those hackers like I used to be, that when he sees a star.target.star domain, uh, he just goes right into it, he just tries to find all of the subdomains, he tries to find all of the things available, and he just digs in as wide as possible. If you're one of those people, this video is exactly for you. Keep watching. Let's get right into it, shall we? But first I would really, really like to thank my Patreons. You guys are amazing. I have three Patreons already. Super, if you guys want to support me and you have extra cash, please don't feel uh, obligated to do it. I make enough money to live. It's just money that goes back to the channel for prizes and that kind of stuff. So if you guys want to, there's a Patreon link in the description below. Now, about the video, what I want to talk to you guys about is that I used to be one of those people, I used to see a start.target.star uh, target, so a scope that's really wide, so I used to scan all of my possible assets, I used to find all of the possible subdomains, and that's because I saw a lot of talks that talked about this sense of urgency, because they had to be, they wanted to stop finding duplicates, they wanted to be the first one to find new subdomains, to be able to test those subdomains. Now, I was one of those people that looked at those talks, and I thought to myself, okay, so I, I have to be first. That's really important that I'm the first person to find a new subdomain and that I'm the first person to find something. But I was completely wrong when I saw that, when I thought that, I mean. So uh, why was I wrong? Well, it's because a lot of the things that I was uh, looking for, I, I, I had this mindset suddenly that I had to look really wide but I forgot to look deep because I, I was flooded by all of this information, but I didn't even know my basics. So I was doing all of this domain enumeration. I had thousands of subdomains. I had a huge list of subdomains and I was flooded because I didn't even know what a basic cross-site scripting attack looked like. Well, I did have some experience, of course, but you guys know that the basic cross-site scripting attacks never work in real life. And if they do, you're extremely lucky. So that's why I was, in my opinion, a little bit dumb because, in my opinion, it's a lot better if you start with the basics. So I have a few tips for you guys. Now, I hope you uh, find these useful because I would have loved to give these to myself when I was younger and when I was just starting. So the first thing I want to tell you guys is stop going so wide and start going a lot deeper. When all of these other hackers are starting up their tools, are starting up their port scans, their Nikto scans, all of their vulnerability scanners, I want you to stop and I want you to go into the application and I want you to use it for a couple of hours like you would any other application. So what I always do when other people are, are firing up their scanners is I at least take one day or eight hours to get to know what I'm actually testing. How do you guys know what's impactful if you don't even know what you're looking for, what you're doing, you know? So for me, it's very important that you really understand what you're testing and what you're looking for. Now, I have another tip for you guys uh, regarding that. If you really want to go deep, I would really advise you guys to, uh, first of all, get to know the application, of course, but also dig into the JavaScript and I know it's hard and in the beginning I don't need you guys to know JavaScript to get into bug bounty hunting but once you get into bug bounty hunting a bit I would highly uh, advise you guys to learn some JavaScripting because a JavaScript is like a gold mine that's often overlooked and that's really often forgotten. Now um, I have a few attack vectors that I can share with you guys. I hope you guys are interested in that. Um, a few things in a, another video that you can try, but I would really try to hammer the main application Especially if you're just getting started It's really not a good idea to start looking for all of these different subdomains because you don't even know what you have to do um, I would highly recommend that you start looking also for non-paid programs in the beginning just go and look for, um, I'll put it in the description below as well, there's an awesome Google dorks list that helps you find uh, programs, that, uh, sorry, I mean targets that have a bug bounty program. And you can even find targets that are not on the big bug bounty platforms like Integrity, Bug Crowd, uh, HackerOne. 
you can find those programs using a simple Google Dork. And those are really interesting programs because they contain a high amount of vulnerabilities. Not a lot of hackers have been through them yet, but they don't always offer any money. You know, usually they don't because it's not really uh, financially feasible, let's say, for them to offer you money, but they will offer you always their gratitude, sometimes swag, you know, some cool stuff, maybe a t-shirt. Uh, and sometimes even a bonus if they are financially capable and if they really like your work you might get a financial bonus so um, it shouldn't be your first incentive to the finances you know I do bug bounty as well to make some extra money I think everybody makes wants to make some extra money doing bug bounty hunting I don't think a lot of people just hack for the t-shirts you know <laughs> we want to see some cash as well uh, eventually and I don't think you should focus too much on the big bug bounty hunters. Now, what I mean by that is there are a lot of bug bounty hunters out there like Nahamsek, Tom Nom Nom. These guys are making a lot of money doing bug bounties, but I don't think you should focus too much on them. Because in life, and this is some general life advice for you guys as well, in life not everybody gets the same opportunities. That's very important that you understand that. You have to compare yourself to where you were yesterday, not to somebody else. You have to grow every day, and when you take steps to grow every day, there's a thing called compounding interest. So that also works for life. When you take steps to increase your knowledge, you're automatically going to gain more in life. It, it's just the way it works, you know? And you're going to build your skill set that's going to allow you to find more bugs, test deeper, find better vulnerabilities. And that's what matters. When you're a bug bounty hunter, it's really important that you grow personally. That will also keep you motivated because it's a very big problem in bug bounty hunting for me at least. Keeping motivated was a huge problem. But when I'm not motivated enough, I just go onto a different program and try to see what I can find there. And again, I would highly advise you guys to just dig really deep and try to find every single thing that you can. Find those hidden parameters to fuss, find those hidden endpoints that you can try to look for. Look on GitHub, try to find some API keys, try to see if you can find some Trello boards, try to see if you can find some open Jira instances. There are so many things that you can do that involve your main application, your main core business. Because if you really want to have impactful bugs, you have to hit a company's core business. And how are you going to do, do that if you don't even know what the company's core business is? It's super important that you do. Because when I, uh, for example, if I'm testing a business to business application, I'm testing completely differently than when I'm testing a business to consumer application. Because people who use a business to business application are often in a trusted position. Not everybody gets access to that program. So you're automatically more trusted and your bugs are automatically less impactful. If you can only do uh, some cross-site scripting in your company itself and it's really obvious who did that cross-site scripting attack your bug is going to have way less impact so that's really really matterful that you uh, keep that in mind what you're testing and how you're testing it so i hope you guys enjoyed this rant leave your thoughts in the comments below because i would really uh, like to know what you guys think about all of this stuff you know how to find how to avoid duplicates uh, how to keep motivated uh, how you compare yourself to others or to yourself uh, let me know in the comments below and if you guys want also join the discord channel we have a lot of stuff on there um, a lot of people to help you as well so if you have any questions feel free to ask them there as well and i hope i'll see you in the next video bye bye everybody